today's lecture, we're going to be covering the sensory systems. As you all know, there are five senses to your body, touch, taste, smell, sight, and hearing. We're going to be going into these in a little bit of detail. We'll start off with touch. All right, when you think of touch, most people think of their fingers, right? It's a very tactile thing, and that's true, but touch is really having that sensation anywhere on your body. You can feel when somebody taps you on their shoulder. You can feel when you step on something sharp on the bottom of your foot. Right? So it's all these sensory neurons that are located within your skin that can actually feel external stimuli from your environment. Hair is also a part of that. right? You have hair on your arms. So if the wind blows or somebody kind of barely touches you, maybe they touch the hair but not the skin itself, you can still feel it. So then the question is, why do we need to feel? Why is feeling necessary? Why is this sense of touch important to life? Giving you a little bit of time to think about it. All right, the big thing is that you can feel when you're injured, right? You can feel an injury on yourself. So if you didn't have that sensation and maybe you cut yourself, but you didn't have the sense of touch, you might not feel it. And if it was a deep enough cut or a bad enough cut, you could conceivably bleed and continue bleeding. And if you didn't notice, you could bleed to death. Moving on to the next sense, which is taste. All right, it's a sensory function. Again, all of these are part of your senses. They're all sensory functions. And this one is closely linked to smell. So if you've ever had to take a medicine that didn't taste good, a lot of people don't like the taste of things like Robitussin. Um, you might plug your nose when you take the medicine just to make it taste a little less potent, right? Because when you plug your nose, it affects how things taste. Also, if you've ever noticed, if you've been sick, and you're pretty stuffy, your nose is very stuffed up, so you can't really breathe or smell, food just don't taste as good, right? And that's linked back to this as well. And you have taste buds on your tongue, obviously, and there are different areas, some that detect bitter, sweet, sour, or salty depending, so a fun activity to do is get like a Sour Patch Kid or some kind of sour candy like that, and touch it to the top, the tip of your tongue, the very tip, the sides of your tongue, and the top of your tongue, different areas, and kind of see where you can taste the, the sour. And you can do this with anything that's bitter, sweet, sour, or salty. So why is taste so important? What makes taste necessary? Again, a little bit of time to think. Um, the biggest thing is so you know you can taste if you're eating something that is bad, right? Not necessarily bad for you because sometimes things that are bad for you taste delicious like french fries. Um, but there are things like bad mayonnaise, bad milk. You can taste them when they're sour. And of course, when things like that are sour, have gone rotten, you don't want to eat them, you can get sick. Of course, linked closely in with taste is smell. We talked a little bit about that. Um, your sense of smell is also known as your olfactory sense. And what it is, how it works, molecules from the air go into your nose, right? And then your nose, the sensory neurons in your nose send messages to the central nervous system that it interprets that information and identifies the smell. If it's a new smell, it might not identify it, but, but it makes sense of what you're smelling. So again, smell is very important for the same reason that taste is, right? To know if food is rotten before you consume something that is rotten. Again, so sometimes maybe you've taken a sip of rotten milk before and it's gross and disgusting, so in the future you've learned now to kind of smell that carton first to see if there's anything gross smelling in there, if it smells sour or anything like that. Um, but it's also important, let's say you're asleep and something in the house catches on fire, you can smell the smoke things like that. So sometimes you can smell danger, right? I know that sounds like a weird way to phrase it, but smell certain life-threatening situations. Now the fourth sense that we're going over is sight. And you'll notice underneath this one it's listed a bunch of different structures. Now, of course sight is important. You want to be able to see and to visualize. And we have some lessons in class that go into um, the parts of the eyes in even more detail and how the eye works, the actual physiology behind it. Um, but here I just want to hit some of the key structures to make sure you knew them in terms for the quiz and test and everything like that. 
So the cornea is the outer covering of your eye. The iris is actually the colored part in your eye. Um, people can have blue irises, green irises, hazel irises, light brown, dark brown, variations like that. Um, and it's actually the part that regulates the amount of light that enters into the eye. So even though the pupil, the next structure, that black spot in the middle, is where the light actually enters, it's the iris that regulates how much light can enter. So when you talk about your eyes being dilated, right, or when you look at a light, your pupil gets really small, it's actually the size of the iris adjusting, right, not the pupil itself adjusting. Lacrimal glands are your tear ducts, now obviously where tears are produced. And then you have these two structures in your retina, rods and cones, and they're both in the back of the eye where the retina is. The rods see night vision, or kind of interpret black and white, darker vision, and cones see color vision or daytime vision. And again, why is sight important? The, the most straightforward answer is to see danger, right? To see your surroundings. If you couldn't see your surroundings, you might run into things more often, fall into holes, ditches, get caught on things. And of course, there are many people who are blind in the world, and there's all sorts of adaptive strategies. But, you know, for the average person, sight is very important, right? You can also see danger. You can see things approaching, you can see yourself approaching different situations and scenarios. The final sense is hearing, and again, same as the eye, there's a variety of structures listed here, and there's also a lesson um, within Novanet that you'll be doing where you go over a lot of this stuff in a lot more detail, and go over the physiology of the ear and how it actually processes sound waves. But in terms of this lecture, we're going to focus on the tympanic membrane, it's a membrane in your ear, um, and it actually turns the sound waves into sound vibration. So as a sound wave hits this membrane, it starts to vibrate. The cochlea is a fluid-filled sac that takes the sound vibration sent from the tympanic membrane into nerve impulses. And the nerve impulses will then go into the auditory nerve and be sent on. Semicircular canals are part of your ear structure too, and they're involved in balance control. So I don't know if anyone has ever been sick to the point of having their ears pretty congested and you just sort of feel off balance, a little, almost a little vertigo sensation, right? And that's a lot of times because your semicircular canals are being affected by the infection or inflammation within your ear. And then the pina, of course, is the cartilage flap that helps convert and direct sound waves from the environment into your ear. So the final question, why is hearing important? And the biggest answer would be to hear danger, to hear your surroundings, right? So not only could it be to hear the fire alarm going off in the middle of the night so you can wake up and get out of a burning house or something extreme like that, but it could even be to hear someone call your name. You know, somebody to say, hey, so-and-so, watch out, or look out for that. Right. So hearing can be a very important in a variety of ways as well. That is it for the Senses Lecture. Have a wonderful day.